Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of Ask a Photo Pro. It's me, Cardi. Welcome. We are talking today about how to start a photography business. And I wanted to get really into a comprehensive guide, you know, because I think it's necessary. Turning your photography hobby into a successful business is something that it's something that we all dream about. And it requires more than just technical skills. Today, we're going to talk about how you can set up your photography business to ensure that it's professionally rewarding and financially sustainable. That's the point that how do you make it rewarding and financially stable? So first thing, you have to embrace your passion. The first step in turning your passion for photography into a full-time business is to understand what drives you. Photography can be more than just a job. It can be a way to express your creativity and connect with people on a more meaningful level. So before diving into the business aspect of it, reflect on what types of photography you're most passionate about. Do you find joy in making beauty in fashion images or maybe catching the beautiful moments of a wedding, the raw emotion of a portrait? Focusing on what you love doing will not only make your work more enjoyable, but also more authentic, which your clients can really see, sense and appreciate. So. Let's get into what comes first. The first thing that you have to do if you're trying to get into the photography business is define your niche. Choosing the right niche, it's more crucial than you might think. It's setting the foundation for a successful photography business. By focusing on a specific genre or style, you can refine your skills, you can improve your marketability, and you can better meet the needs of your target audience. Once you understand your marketability, Sorry guys, let me just get right to my notes. When you focus on a specific genre or style, you can refine your skills, which of course improves your marketability, and you're able to better need make to meet the needs of your target audience. So, how do you effectively understand your passion and skills and turn it into a niche? Start by assessing what aspects of photography excite you the most, whether you're continuing to capture raw energy of live sports, or if you're loving shooting nature, or events, or portraits. Understanding what your passion is is key, and it's also important to evaluate your skills in these areas and if there's a market for these areas. Many people love taking pictures, but there's so much more marketability when it comes to actually making photos. So consider what style showcases your strengths the most and allows you to communicate your artistic vision the most effectively. Understand that you actually have to research market demand because once you've identified your interest, you have to research the market demand in that area. Look into what other photography services other photographers are offering, what's in high demand and why. If you live in an example that's known for amazing picturesque landscapes, nature photography might be a lucrative niche if you live in a place where People come fly to your area to do nature photography. Alternatively, if your area hosts lots of corporate events or weddings, focusing on these type of events could be super beneficial. You might live in Utah where there's more weddings than any other place in America. 
analyze the competition. Understanding your competition is vital in determining the feasibility of your niche. Investigate what other photographers in your area who are specializing in the same style as you're considering. What are they doing well? What can you do differently or better? Identifying your unique selling proposition within your chosen, within your chosen niche can set you apart from the competition. It might involve offering a unique photo style, using innovative technology, macro lenses, drones, and providing exceptional customer service. Let's talk a little bit about long-term sustainability. Think about how the long-term prospects of your chosen niche works. Is it a trend that might fade or is it evergreen? For instance, wedding photography has endured demand, whereas there are certain types of event photography that might be more seasonal or trend-based. If you're not really into going out and being out till three o'clock in the morning, <clears throat> excuse me, doing event photography, shooting live shows, that kind of stuff might not be for you. Choose a niche that you can see yourself enjoying and excelling in for years to come. And Ensure that it aligns with your long-term business goals. So, making decisions. After a thorough analysis, you have to decide on the niche that best combines your passions, your skills, market demand, and a competitive landscape. That thoughtful approach to, by selecting your niche will not only enhance your professional satisfaction, but also increase your chances of business success. Photographers that take pictures choose what they'll shoot next. Photographers that make pictures decide what they need to shoot next in order to fill a market gap, a portfolio gap, a skill gap, or even a growth gap. Be a specialist. Specialists are in demand more. They get paid more and they're highly respected. Specialists are searchable. No one just searches photographer. They search editorial portraits, Toronto. And if you search editorial portraits, Toronto, you'll see me. Defining your niche is more than just picking a genre of photography. It involves deep self-reflection, market research, and strategic planning. By carefully selecting a niche that aligns with both your professional and personal interests, as well as market opportunities, you can create a strong foundation for your photography business that resonates with your target audience and helps you stand out in a competitive market. Now, I know you saw a sneak preview of this next slide. Oops. Create a business plan. Crafting a comprehensive business plan is crucial for a photographer, especially if you're trying to be an entrepreneur. Photography is so competitive. Having a business plan not only will help you steer through this early stage, but It'll help you establish your business and help you aid yes yes. and manage your growth effectively by setting clear, achievable goals, which might range from becoming a leading phot wedding photographer in your region to capturing the exotic locales of, of a travel photographer. If you love to travel and you're traveling a lot already, become the travel photographer that you've always dreamt about. Use the SMART criteria to ensure that your goals are, number one, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. When you're continually identifying your target market, if you shoot weddings, you're looking for newly engaged couples. If you do corporate stuff, look for corporate entities, art galleries, depending on your chosen niche. You have to really understand the demographics and the buying habits of your audience. And it's going to guide so many aspects of your business, especially pricing strategies in your promotional material. And by the way, talking about pricing, 
Your strategy should reflect the market and cover costs while also ensuring profit profitability. So many photographers fail in the first year because they actually undercharge. They undercharge because they don't even know what market value is. So they're like, oh, I'll do it for a hundred dollars. I'll do it for $150. And it takes you so many shoots to make $1,500 when each one of those shoots could be $1,500. Consider different pricing frameworks, packages, a la carte options, time-based rates. I don't really deal with charging for time. I charge for the project. And also see what other photographers in your area are doing. Make sure that you're competitive, but you don't have to price like other people are. You can actually be the best in your field. Your marketing efforts also have to be comprehensive, especially when you're combining online strategies through your website and social media and traditional methods like taking out an ad on Facebook, networking, and going to events. You can do both. You have to use what I call both active and passive advertising, passive or marketing. Passive marketing is your website and your social media. Active advertising is using your social media to find potential clients and sending out DMs to see if your services could help them. That's the difference. Looking on LinkedIn and finding potential clients, reaching out to them via email and offering your services to them. It's much different when you're actually niched and you know the exact type of client that you're looking for and the type of work that you do. It makes marketing super easy. Also, financial plan. Not only do you have to have a business plan, you have to have a financial plan, which is projecting your initial costs to actually run a business, ongoing expenses like all those subscriptions, and the expected revenue that you're going to end up getting in order to keep your business actually financially viable. There's also all kinds of templates that you can use in order to create business plans like Live Pet Plan or Score. They can be instrumenting, instrumental in helping you draft a good business plan. So lastly, a good business plan is adaptable. So regularly update your business plan to reflect on any changes in the market. And also, if your objectives change, your business plan should be a dynamic document that serves as a roadmap to your success, which will help you navigate through the challenges and capitalize on opportunities in the ever evolving photography industry. This is the part where a lot of people fail and that's legalizing your business, your photography business, legalizing it. It's a crucial step to not only protect yourself from liabilities, but also enhance your professional credibility. You have to legalize it. There's a con here's a concise guide. This is how you have to think about it. Number one, you have to choose the right business structure. Like there's so many different ways to go. The structure that you choose affects everything from your liability to your taxes. You yes could do yes. a show, a sole proprietorship, which is the simplest form, but it doesn't offer any liability protection. You could do a partnership which works well for businesses that are owned by multiple people. But similarly, it lacks the personal liability protection unless it's structured as an LP or a limited partnership. You can do a corporation, which is what I have. A corporation is more complex and a little bit more costly to establish, but it provides liability protection and tax benefits. There's also, if you're in the US, a limited liability company, which is called an LLC, which combines the liability protection of a corporation with the operational flexibility of a partnership. And you have to register your business. Registering your business is super, super important. Once you decide on a structure, register your business, do it with local or state authorities, obtain a employer identification number, an EIN from the IRS if you're an American, which is crucial for tax purposes and often required for opening um, business bank accounts. Remember, there's also licensing and permits. Depending on your location and the specifics of the type of services that you're offering, you might need a general business license to operate legally. You might need a professional business license if your state regulates photographers. 
Home-based business permits, maybe if you're operating from home, shooting project, shooting personal um, product photography, addressing zoning and safety concerns is different for every different type of photography that you do. If you're a wedding photographer, you might need event permits for specific public space usage or for doing photo shoots with large gatherings. Proper insurance. Insurance is essential for protecting yourself and your business finances. And there's so many different types of insurance. There's general liability insurance, yes which yes. protects yourself against injury or damage claims. There's professional liability insurance, which covers negligence or failure to perform professionals. Like if you get sued because you failed to deliver you can get professional liability insurance, but you're going to be too good for that. You know, that'll never happen. It's never happened to me. There's equipment insurance. Imagine you lose your gear. You have insurance to protect yourself. So you get replacement value of all your photography equipment. And there's also commercial property insurance, which covers damage or physical damage or fires or anything like that, that happen in your location where your gear is held. There's so much. When it comes to starting a photography business, there's so much. It doesn't end. Contracts, legal documents. Having well-drafted legal documents can prevent future legal disputes and create clarity when it comes to your client relationships. You're trying to clarify any discrepancies, which is why we have to have contracts. There's service contracts, which specify the terms of your service, your pricing and your delivery. There's model releases. If you're trying to shoot people or using people's images for marketing or advertising in a commercial setting, you need a model release. And if you're doing that on a location that is a known building, you need a property release when you're using a private property or sometimes even commercial property if it's being used in your photographs commercially. What we're trying to do is maintain compliance and compliance means we're informed about all the legal requirements, including taxes, employment law, copyright rules, and we're regularly consulting with legal experts in order to help us navigate these complexities effectively. Like we can't know it all. So in order to maintain compliance, we actually sometimes need to have help. So understand setting up your business legally involves so many detailed steps, but each one's important for enduring and ensuring long-term protection and professionalism. By carefully establishing your business's legal frameworks, you can avoid so many common pitfalls that new business owners encounter. This thorough approach ensures that you're able to focus more on photography and less on potential business or legal issues. Step number four, invest in quality equipment. You've heard me say before, I invest in equipment that either makes me money or saves me money. That's why I have an R5. And it's also why I have Max. I future-proof myself. I buy things once and have them for long time. So investing in the right equipment is crucial for success in the professional image photography business. When you begin with a reliable camera body that matches your specific needs, you don't need a mirrorless if you don't need a mirrorless. But if you shoot people, you need a mirrorless. Make sure that your gear is industry standard as far as resolution, speed and features. Again, if your camera doesn't accept a grip, if you can't put a grip on your camera, it's not a pro camera because a grip double battery, horizontal, ver horizontal or vertical shooting. Depending on your niche, make sure you choose the lenses that enhance your ability to capture your subject perfectly. If you shoot landscapes, make sure you have all the wide angle lenses that you need. Macro lenses, if you're doing detailed close-ups, I'm a portrait photographer and I have incredible macro lenses. So I'm able to photograph just an eyeball. For me, my 50 millimeter 1.2 is the lens that's on my camera 50% of the time. And then my 85, but I have 
five, six, I have six prime lenses and two zooms. The two zooms are never used. I have a 24 to 70 that I never touch and I have a center to 210 that I never touch. But the lenses that I do use, 16, 50, 85, 100, 135. They're on my camera all the time. Good lighting equipment also is essential, especially if your work is varied all the time. And sometimes you're shooting under situations where you need controlled lighting. It might mean reflectors, diffusers, strobe heads, stands, tripods. Don't overlook the importance of post-processing. You have to have professional, if you're not on creative cloud, I mean, Yes, it costs money, but you're a photographer. Invest in professional grade editing software in order to refine your photography and give it a professional polished look. It's more strategic to invest in a few pieces of high quality equipment that will reliably perform over time than it is to stock up on tons of little gadgets that might not offer you the quantity or the functionality that you actually need. I always focus on quality over quantity. And if you do that, it'll ensure that your work stands out for its professionalism and distinct style, which will potentially earn you a higher rate and a better reputation in this incredibly competitive market. Step number five, build a portfolio. Your portfolio is essentially your business card in the photography industry. It's critical to compile a professional portfolio that not only showcases your best work, but clearly reflects your unique style and niche. This collection of work is what you will use to demonstrate what you actually can do in the industry. You show your portfolio in client meetings, your portfolios on your website and your portfolio there gets you the client meetings. It should be thoughtfully curated to highlight the value that you bring to a specific niche. You have to emphasize the distinct skills, your perspective and the aesthetics that set you apart from other photographers. So. Make sure that each piece that you include in your portfolio is selected to contribute a, co a cohesive narrative about the kind of photographer that you are and the type of services that you excel at. Don't show work that you don't want to get hired to shoot. This careful curation helps potential clients visualize the potential outcome of their investment in your services. If your style is all over the place, it's hard for clients to have a vision as to what their work will look like when they work with you. It helps you attract the right business and, and establish a strong professional reputation. Oh. Step number six, developing a strong online presence. In today's digital age, it's essential for any business, including your photography business, to have an amazing online presence. It starts with creating an amazing website that shows that incredible portfolio that we just talked about and pages that are easy to navigate. Your website has to be so simple and easy to navigate. Don't make it 35 clicks to see a single picture. Your website should effectively showcase your style and the quality of your photography, helping potential clients understand your capabilities and your artistic approach. Alongside your website, you have to use social media, Instagram, Facebook, Substack. It's so crucial. Those platforms allow you to post your work, engage with your followers and share behind the scenes content, which helps you connect with potential clients. When you use social media effectively, you can create a dynamic online presence that not only displays your work, but it helps you build relationships. Those relationships that you're building end up being potential customers, which broadens your reach in the digital landscape. Finding your niche is so important because once you establish your niche, it makes it so easy to do step seven, which is marketing your business. Effective marketing is essential for the growth and success of your photography business. 
you have to encompass a mix of both online and offline strategies to maximize your reach and your engagement with the target audience. Digital marketing, we have to be always doing digital marketing, but it should include not just social media presence on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, but Substack. Use Substack where you can show your work and interact with both existing and potential clients. If you do a new job with somebody, put them on their mailing list. An email marketing campaign is a great way to help your audience informed about new stuff that you're now offering. Hey, I'm now offering video, or hey, I can now edit video, or hey, I'm now adding fashion to my portraits. It's a great way to showcase your portfolio updates. And when you use email marketing, thank you. When you use email marketing, it allows you to actually send out your latest portfolio updates. You guys with me? You and you with me still? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Offline, we also have to be attending industry events. It's super critical for us to be not just not just online all the time. We actually have to be out there in person trying to develop an online presence. So let's talk a little bit. I'm sorry. Oh, one second. I forgot. If you're running a photography business, especially if you're doing that and juggling photo shoots, I've got something that might be a game changer for you. It's called Indie. And trust me, it's like having a personal business assistant, only it's affordable. First off, imagine creating eye-catching project proposals super easily. Indie helps you do that so you can impress your clients and get more gigs. Plus, there's these ready-to-go contracts which are a breeze to sign thanks to electronic signatures. No more paperwork headaches. Then, there's the task management part. You know how you have to keep track of a million things? Indie has a great to-do list and digital tools that let you visualize your work and keep everything super organized. It's really helpful. Invoicing, Indie's got you covered. Send out professional invoices and estimates and let your clients pay through options like PayPal, Stripe, Zelle, and even pay you by check if they need to. Working closely with clients, Indie has a cool client portal where you can chat, share files, and keep everybody in the loop. It's like your project command center. You don't need to use Google Drive. For those of you who are still billing by the hour, there's a time tracker that logs how much time you're spending on each project. Talk about making life easier. And then there's extras like file storage for your photos, customizable forms for all your client interactions, and a calendar that gives you a bird's eye view of your schedule. Here's the kicker. With my promo code CARDI35, you can get 35% off your first year of Indie's Pro Plan, which works out to be about $7.80 a month if you go monthly, and an even better deal of $5.85 a month if you pay annually. It's $5.85. So if you want to focus more on the creative side of your business and less on that stuff that you don't like doing that much, Indie is your go-to. Click the link in the video description, use my code CARDI35, and watch the magic happen. Give it a go. See how it works for you and watch how it transforms your business. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. So offline, we have to also be attending industry events, networking. And one thing that I started to do very early was I participated in exhibitions. I sent my work in and I showed my work in group shows. That forms partnerships also with local businesses, which provides valuable opportunities to not only build these relationships, but also promote your services directly to potential clients. Also, when you employ a diverse range of marketing strategies, you can create a comprehensive outreach effort that not only effectively spreads the word about your photography business, but it attracts a steady flow of clients. I like to think that I offer incredible customer service. I do, I, I know that I do. In the competitive world of photography, outstanding customer service 
definitely distinguishes you from the others. It creates loyal, loyal clients. And it's crucial for you to learn how to provide exceptional services that goes beyond just basic professionalism. For me, some of them are being timely in my responses and diligent in meeting deadlines. If someone reaches out to me, I hit them back within the hour easily. I always hit them back within the hour. What that does is it sets a standard of reliability while also being responsive and attentive helps me actually see what clients yes yes. need. And they give me feedback that shows me that like, wow, they could tell that I really cared about their individual experience. So I strive to exceed expectations wherever possible, whether it's through small gestures like delivering extra photos or delivering ahead of schedule or by customizing packages to specifically meet a specific client's needs. When you go through these efforts, it leads to a high client satisfaction and it increases the likelihood of them recommending you, them using you again, which is invaluable in building reputation and your client base. So exceptional customer service creates memorable experiences that clients are excited to share with others and it drives referrals which helps your business thrive we make money from referrals if you wanted a photographer you're going to ask your friend hey do you know a great photographer imagine if you've given someone an amazing experience and someone asks that person of course they're going to be like oh my god call steve cardi or call you so Step number nine, we have to manage our finances. And that's where a lot of photographers fail. Effective financial management, it's crucial for sustainability and also the growth of your photography business. It's important to meticulously track everything, all forms of income and all forms of expenses to ensure that your business actually remains profitable and it functions healthily and it's financially healthy. So utilize modern accounting software, which greatly simplifies this process. Also use Indie, which I just played my sponsor spot, which can help you with so much of these financial flows, analyze your business's financial status in real time. So many buttons. Also consider hiring an accountant. An accountant is just easy money. You get that money back 10 times over by the money that your accountant's gonna save you. An accountant can offer expert advice on tax preparation, cost reduction, and financial planning. So an accountant's gonna help you navigate the complex financial, navig the financial landscape. Obviously your tax returns, advising on business expansion, purchases, and also ensuring that you make informed decisions that are gonna help you long-term. And step number 10 is continually learning and adapting. If you wanna be a pro photographer and you think school was over, <laughs> school was over, you're you're already you're already behind you got to be continually learning and adapting in the dynamic world of photography that continually learning and adaptation are key to maintaining relevance and enhancing your photography business's growth and also the industry is constantly evolving with new technology new styles and customers preferences it changes all the time so in order to keep pace and stay competitive it's important to actively seek out learning opportunities workshops online courses seminars this youtube channel that you're watching right now and focus on your technical skills and your business practices your business understanding that ongoing education can help you master the latest techniques and trends, but also improve your workflow so you have a better understanding of the market dynamics. Also, adapting these changes by updating your techniques and possibly even your business model can make a, like, 
it makes such a huge impact on your bottom line. You can't understand. I completely changed my business model and look at the vibe. Look at how happy I am. You can do it too. And once you embrace the mindset of continuously improving, that flexibility can lead to so much greater innovation and success in your photography career. Embarking on this journey and establishing a photography business is not just embracing a profession. It's about committing to a passion that captures the essence of moments and the beauty of the world around you. But understand this, with diligent planning and dedication that I've been outlining by the way today, you're not just setting up a business, you're laying the groundwork for a thriving experience with you. In the realm of photography, as in all forms of art, your passion, your creativity, and your continual pursuit of excellence are just as crucial as your technical skills. Your ability to adapt to new challenges and continually refine your skills. You also, you have to embrace innovation. These things serve as cornerstones to your growth and success. As you journey through this evolving landscape, each photograph that you make adds a unique story to your portfolio. Each client interaction opens a new avenue of artistic opportunity and exploration. And every obstacle that you overcome enhances your resilience and your sharpness as a business owner. So we have to stay inspired. And I want you to keep pushing your boundaries of creativity and of business acumen. Watch your photography business thorough and watch it flourish into the beacon of inspiration and success for other photographers in this market. The most successful photographers in the industry are those who look at their work as perpetual. It never stops. It's a craft that grows and photography is a craft that grows with us. Know this, this whole journey is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And if you found this video today, I hope it brought you some value. Definitely hit the like button and subscribe if you aren't already. I'm here to answer any questions that you might have related to starting your photography business. My masterclass number four on Sunday is talking about just that. And I'm going to deep dive on the 10 points that I went into today and so many more. I think that the minutia between the things that I talk about and the stuff that you can learn on YouTube, you need another pro guiding you and helping you get to that next level. If you have a question, hit Q, command Q, and I'll be hands be happy to answer any questions for you. These kinds of presentations for me are really important. And again, if you're looking for something more than other things that you find on YouTube, I'm really obsessed about your success. I seeing the photographers that have been watching me for months progress seeing them create an understanding for themselves about photography business seeing photographers make a living with their photography that's what i'm obsessed about i just want to see you get better for some people i might be too much because i tell truth i speak from the heart i tell you exactly what i think and i tell you things that are going to help you grow as a person sometimes growth hurts. That's why sometimes knowledge hurts, you know, sometimes change hurts. Sometimes being fixed hurts. It's why we pay to go to the dentist. We pay to go to the dentist so they can fix, fix our teeth. Although that pain hurts a little bit. We know that um, it's for a better good. So again, I'm here to answer any questions that you may have about the business of photography. And if you don't want to ask me live and you're watching this after the fact, leave me comments because I do like to answer comments. I like to answer all of them. Also, here's a fun fact. I asked you a poll at the beginning of this episode and the poll was, have you made money with your camera? And of all the people who answered, we have a complete 50-50 split. 50% 50 of people have said, yes, I've made money with my camera. And 50% have said, no, I have not, but I am here to learn how. So 
Stephen C says, I am here listening, but also getting ready for turkey hunting in the morning. Greetings from Pennsylvania. Great video, Cardi. This is what put you on my map. I'm definitely sharing this with some of my photography friends. Awesome video today. Thank you so much. Trips to Mexico also can help. Yes, indeed, they do. They do, they do. Understand that um, nothing makes me happier than seeing progress with emerging creators. Like, I'm kind of obsessed about it. Today I went very much on my notes with a couple of glitches. I hope you guys were okay with it, but also yes, sir, yes. the new space. I hope you guys are feeling, um, I got to tell you, I, I, at some point I'm going to tour you around, but it, 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 it's like today I did some final touches, but seeing no wires under any desk everything on wheels nothing on the floor no distractions nothing on my desk except for exactly what i need i i definitely now now i'm ready to do a desk breakdown video and thinking i'm thinking hard about where i'm going to put my third camera I'm trying to think hard about where i'm going to put my third camera Thank you so much, Donna. I appreciate you. And also, Yana is saying she can't wait to get her reset happening when she goes back home to Yard in June. Vicky can't wait for her July reset in Costa Rica. Um, yes, I got to say, I've been to Costa Rica 10 times and... It's changed so much since my first time in Costa Rica in the 90s. Holy, it's a different place. It's so built up. It's looking more like Hawaii right now than than Costa Rica, I got to tell you. But I hope, again, guys, like, I worked hard on the set. I hope you guys like the new set. I worked so hard on the set to make this, like, <laughs> to make this vibe work. Um... Let me, I don't know, like I wish I could show you more with just these two camera angles. But we got the couch behind me. Costa Rica is amazing, yes. It, it's, it's so sick. But again, Mexico, you know, today I thought I was going to talk about Mexico. And I'm sure you guys want me to talk about Mexico. And I will. I just think like... I was going to save that for Sunday's episode, save that for behind the picture, centered a blog post on Saturday with some new photos, and also maybe have Benja make a couple of videos from all the amazing footage that I put together. So I think that's a smarter idea. I think I have two videos from my, the two real days that I went out shooting photographs. Um, so yeah, I have one day that is like architecture and one day that is um, Tia Tiguacan pyramids. So two definitely different types of photography, um, but I think two different 10 minute videos. So I think that that's what I'm going to do. If you guys have any insights or inspiration as far as what you would love to see in my set, I'm being glitched by the way also. If you're a member of this stream, you can control my stream, as you can see. I am one of the rare YouTube channels that if you watch me live and you are a member, you can chat because I have to give perks to the people who choose to give me $5 a month. And what I allow them to do is speak to me live during my all of my live streams. But also they're allowed to, they glitch me out. As you can see, they're doing all of these glitches. They bring up Taylor Swift. They, they have all this crazy control. And I mean, I have some control too. I definitely have the ability to do some stuff here on my own that you guys can't do to me. Thank goodness you can't do stuff like this to me yet, but. I hope today brought you value. If you guys have no questions, um, understand that the masterclass, the masterclass, I'm going to go deeper, way deeper on this. I'm going to talk to you about some tools um, and ways that I struggled and how I got through. 
um, when it came to setting up and starting my business and how I have my things set up exactly. I'm going to go through exactly how I have my business set up. So if you are in the master class and you are <laughs> the glitches, the glitches, the glitches, guys, I hope today brought you value. I hope you found it high quality content. Again, the glitches always make me happy. Say goodbye to my dancers. They always like to come out and rock every once in a while. I appreciate you for tuning in live. Again, remember, I'm Cardi today, tomorrow, question. and yesterday. And Yana has a question. Raven has a question. Um, you try and ask questions. Well, Raven, you're not, you're not, you're not following the commands. So, Raven, this floor is yours. Ask me a question, Ravenstone. <laughs> Ravenstone, the floor is yours before I peace out here. You've been trying to ask me questions, so should I scroll up and find them or are you going to type in chat? Um, ask me your question. Not trying to be hostile. Um, how to deal with price undercutting? Well, here's the deal. That's a very good question. Um, so yeah, how you do it, by the way, is you're seeing um, Stephen C give you full instructions. Um, you, you, it all has to do with the level of work that you're doing. Are you making pictures or are you taking pictures? If you're taking pictures, that means you're competing against other people who are also there taking pictures. So that's low frequency work so that's why it's that's why it's a race to the bottom if you're a plumber and there's other plumbers out there you're now either the absolute best plumber in the industry or you're just a, a plumber that like works for the work that they get you know there's a big difference when you're executing ideas versus taking pictures of what you see. When you're executing ideas, there's no limit to the price. And also, no one can execute an idea the way that you can execute an idea. No one can execute an idea the way that I execute an idea. Of course, everybody can shoot that thing that's happening right there that everybody is standing here also pointing their camera at at the, like so <sighs> ravenstone you have to help me are you taking pictures or making pictures because i've yet to see a photo so i don't know what your work looks like your work and how nuts your work is so you're in south africa price undercutting has become the standard and it's ruined the industry well again your you're surrounding yourself with people who don't value photography. Surround yourself with people who value photography. Advertising agencies, design firms. If you're just asking, and again, I'm asking, are you making pictures or are you taking pictures? If you're doing sessions for people, make your work undeniable. Make your work like so undeniable that there's no question your work versus other people's work. If your work's undeniable, there's no question that it's worth more money. So again, without seeing work, without seeing, but again, you believe your work is excellent. You believe your work is excellent, which means your work is probably not excellent because I've been doing it for 35 years and I don't come out saying, I believe my work is excellent. So you got to check yourself, my friend. I've been doing it for 35 years. Helmut Newton, doing it for 35 years, he said, I started to get good at 50. He was shooting for Vogue at 22. I've shot for Vogue. I don't say my work is excellent. Other people tell me my work is excellent. You know? So... Put your work on the table. Talk is cheap. Let me see your portfolio. Let me see your presentation. 
like you saying that your work is amazing, that doesn't mean anything. It's the industry, what the industry says about your work. That's what, the, that's what matters. And if you think that your work is amazing, then you think that you're already up here. That's ego, which affects how good you can actually be. The key to getting good is saying, my work is where it is today. I hope one day it'll be better. That's what I say at three and a half decades. I've shot biggest celebrities. I've shot for Vogue. I've shot for the biggest magazines in the world, but I don't move with ego. Yes, sir. Yes. So I don't move with ego. You move with ego, which might be why you're racing to the bottom. You know what I mean? So put your work on the table, my friend, put your work on the table because talk is cheap. You know what I mean, you saying that your work is excellent makes, makes me think that your work is not excellent. <laughs> Put your work on the table. You know what I mean? Put your Instagram account right here. Let us all see your work and let us say, is your work excellent? Seriously, that's, that's how you do it. Because honestly, photographers have the biggest yes yes. egos, man. Big egos and like no clue. No clue, big ego. Me, biggest clue, no ego. Do you see the difference? I have no ego. Way different. And I'm working. I get $10,000 a day to shoot photos. No ego. So, I don't know. I can't answer your question. I can't answer your question about your market and why you're racing to the bottom. <laughs> Honestly. But I can tell you this, that we get better every time we show up. And I got to tell you, like, Humble yourself, humble yourself like a child. And Bob Marley would say, upon your face, put on a smile and realize that we're here to learn. We're here to learn how to be excellent. And you cannot possibly be excellent unless you've, doing, you've been doing this for two decades, one decade, one decade, two decades, three decades, start getting good but like looking left and looking right at what they're doing you uh, do you ever hear me worried about my competition never so again ego e you got to kill that seriously killing your ego will make you a better photographer i hope this brought you value i will see you guys on thursday for the world's best photo reviews I love you all. Thank you so much for participating. I'm glitching. Thank you for participating. If this brought you value, please leave comments. Understand in the world of professional photography, we are the ones that are getting in our own way. Remember, photographers are some of the most ego-driven <laughs> the photographers that make the most money in this industry move with no ego. They move selflessly all about bringing value to other people. It is not about what the industry can do for you, my friend. It is about what value are you bringing to the industry? If you're not bringing value to the industry, there's nobody who is paying for it. That is why you are racing to the bottom. The reason that I get $10,000 a day is because I am racing to the top. I execute ideas at the highest level. And I speak to my clients the same way that I speak to you. Genuinely, authentically, and truthfully. From the heart, with passion. And that's why I always get booked. I love you all very much. I want nothing but your success. If this video has brought you value, tell a friend. We are setting YouTube on fire.